It's out of your hands, you've done all you can do. You've given God the problem, it's no longer up to you. You prayed the prayer of faith, you're standing on God's truth. While you're waiting on an answer, he has a question for you. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Only believe, trust his words you'll see. His plans are now unfolding, performing perfectly. It's clear how much he loves you. Look at all he's done. For all your questions, there's really only one. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Yeah. Menahems? Yeah? Amen. Ski. Oh! 
Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's an appropriate song for what I'm preaching this morning, this evening. We're going to talk about the birth of Christ. <laughs> you know what? I'll just tell you that song they just sang, the Lord was using it. I mean, he was moving while they were singing it. And if, it, and if he didn't agree with the birth of Christ and, uh, and honoring the Lord for his birth, then why would he move upon it? I'm just telling you. I mean, you, you can take it for whatever it's worth. I don't think God goes around lying to men. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 2. Uh, a lady uh, said to me today, said, uh, we don't need to honor God in his birth. God, now, this is what she said. God never celebrated Christ's birth. Ding, ding, ding. They shouldn't say that to a preacher who don't believe that. <laughs> so I said, Luke chapter 2. Hmm? I was already planning on preaching this. Uh, Luke chapter 2. I said, not only did heaven re celebrate it, the angels celebrated, the shepherds celebrated, huh? and they went to find Christ to celebrate the birth of Christ. I said, I don't know how you can miss that. I mean, you guys are trying to build a doctrine that's not there. And so I said, Luke chapter 2. So I took her to Luke chapter 2. Amen. And <laughs> praise the Lord. That's what this, I don't get it. I don't get it. People just bypass the Bible. Let's make up doctrines. Let's not put the Bible in on this. Or if they do put Bible in on it, they twist the scriptures. Turn and twist and manipulate the scriptures. To f they might as well just get themselves an NIV. Seriously. Don't use the King James to manipulate scriptures. <laughs> just use the NIV. It does a good job on its own. <laughs> Hmm? So I'm just telling you, I don't get it. So I'm just struggling with it myself. I'm having a tough time. Why do people like that? But let's go ahead and let's uh, stand in chapter 2 of Luke. Let's start out here in verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. And to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Hmm. Hmm. She hasn't had a baby yet, but God called it a child. Hmm. And so it was. By the way, you ought to, when you read the Bible, you ought to just take God for every word he says. I got, I got criticized for that. Oh, you're one of those guys that believe every word that God says. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they're trying to make me feel bad about it. Yeah, yeah, I do believe every word. I believe every word from in the beginning, <laughs> huh? God, to the end of Revelation. Amen. <laughs> That's what it says. In, that, wait, by the way, if you took everything out and you just had in the beginning God, Amen. <laughs> well, that's just, everything's said that needs to be said, amen? <laughs> In the beginning, God. Because God's everything. So he said this, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she, I mean, she's having a baby, amen, praise the Lord. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. They, I heard a guy saying that there no such thing as a manger. It wasn't a manger. They had plenty of relatives there. They got into some relative's house and they took care. I said, <laughs> this was a so-called Christian saying this, and he's getting it out of some book he read and not out of the Bible. So I said, well, the Bible says manger. Well, there were no inns. Inns weren't even in invented then. He was, that's how he put it. And I said, the Bible says in. <laughs> I said, so who do I believe? Do I believe you and your felonious book you're reading? Or do I believe the Bible? That's what I tell you. Some people just read way too many other books. Swaddling clothes and laden. By the way, you know why swaddling clothes, right? Swaddling clothes, it, it controls the child. It, it gives them, brings them security and comfort. And also it helps them develop the way they're supposed to. See, they do that to, they actually do that to baby lambs. Huh? And who is Jesus Christ? Behold the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. And they swaddle they swaddle them just like they did the 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 baby lambs that were born. By the way, uh, someone told me that baby lambs don't get born except in March and April, so we know Jesus Christ probably was born at that time. And I said, Really? April uh, December sixteenth, our our sheep just had a baby lamb. 
<laughs> I took pictures, I posted and I said, uh, now tell me. Now this is what I said. I said, now tell me, sheep don't get born in December. Right. Baby lambs don't yeah. get born. So we just had one born. It's 36 degrees at night. It was nighttime when it was born. And it survived and it was fine. And the, ba the sheep were out in the field. Yeah. Huh? And I said, and so they were born. And I said, I, and this is what I said. And I posted this on our Lookout Mountain Baptist Church site. I said, and so I went out there and told the sheep, I said, did you not know that you're supposed to have babies only in March and April according to the historical books? And I said, the sheep said to me, and this is what I wrote, the sheep said to me, bah, bah. And I said, but don't you understand historical books tell us that you're supposed to have babies then? And he said, tr and I said, the lamb said, truth is truth. Bah. <laughs> And I posted that. Man, people aren't touching it with a 20-foot pole. <laughs> huh? Because I got pictures. Baby, I took pictures the next morning after the baby was born. <clears throat> I mean, they, these guys are crazy. They use all this felonious wisdom of men to try to prove that Christ wasn't born at a certain time of the year. But whatever. So praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm having fun up here. I don't know about you. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Uh-oh. Must have made a mistake there, right? No, God didn't make a mistake. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Why are they watching over their flock by night? Hmm. Amen. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. By the way, if you ask questions when you read the Bible, ask yourself questions, you might get some answers. <laughs> God will show you answers, or he'll give you answers. Huh? It says, then the angel said unto them, all right, let's go, the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. So here's this light, the angel, you know, of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. So they're getting all this light in the middle of darkness. And I was telling Kevin yesterday, of course, he already knew it, and that the, the, the darkness isn't a substance. It's just the absence of light. And when God's glory shone, darkness fleed. And light shone all around them, and they feared because, I mean, you think about it. Middle of the night, in the field, and there, I mean, all you see is stars. That's the only light you got, and all of a sudden, the light from heaven shows. And you're going to fall to the ground, too. You're going to think, whoa, what is this? And they did. They feared God, and that's good. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to you all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. That sounds exactly like Jesus. Yep. Huh? Savior, capitalize. Christ, capitalize. Hmm? There's the reason it's capitalized. And it's in the city of David? That's Bethlehem. Hmm? Now look what it says. And this shall be a sign unto you. Amen. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was the angel, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God. Amen. Huh? And saying, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, good will towards men. Amen. I think they were celebrating Christ being born. Hey, they didn't, look at, we're not talking about handing out gifts and everything. We're talking about saying, thank God he is born. we got a Savior. Hey, the, the prophecy's been fulfilled. Amen. Well, Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 4, Isaiah 9, 6, fulfilled. Hmm? They're getting excited. Amen. See, what they think, we're, to, uh, we're celebrating a pagan holiday because we celebrate Christmas. I'm not celebrating a pagan holiday. I'm celebrating Christ's birth. But it, I'll tell you about why we need to celebrate his birth. But glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away, all of a sudden it's dark again. You know what, they, you know what the shepherds were doing? Oh, man, my eyes got to adjust to this darkness. All the light's gone. My pupils pinned because of the light. Now they need to dilate so I can see. So it's going to take some time. It came to pass as angels were gone away from them in heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us go now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Wow, why did he make it known unto them? Because he wants them to go worship him on the day of his birth. Hmm. I guess I better just say, I'm not doing it because it's a pagan holiday. <laughs> hmm. I'm just telling you. 
I'm going to I can't believe how Christmas is being attacked unmercifully by Christians this year. Unmercifully. I think this, I think God's re, uh, his spirit is being withdrawn. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and, and the babe lying in a the manger. They didn't leave out Jesus. Uh, they, did you hear me? They didn't leave Jesus out. They had the mother and they had a father and they had a baby. And that baby was Jesus. They didn't leave Jesus out of their celebration. Anybody get that, Matthew? <laughs> in your celebration, don't leave Jesus out. You can have your parents there. You can have mom and dad there. Don't forget Jesus. Hmm? Hmm. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And what a great time to tell people about Jesus at Christmas time. Amen. Tell them that Jesus was born so he'd come to die so he could have we could have eternal life. Hmm? And all they that heard it wondered, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So now people are in wonder, whoa, what is this they're saying? Right. Hmm? But Mary, of all people, because she's the mother of Jesus, but Mary kept all those things and pondered them in her heart. Now, did you see what she did? She kept all those things and pondered them in her heart. She kept them. We're not going to celebrate Christmas. I don't know. Mary was keeping it in her heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was pondering everything that was said. Huh? See, we don't just ponder that Jesus Christ was born. We ponder that he was born so he could live, so he could die, so he'd go to the center of the earth, so he could rise up from the dead, so he could shed his blood, put it on the mercy seat, and we could all have eternal life if we will call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the shepherds returned... Oh, my soul, what do they think they're doing glorifying and praising God? On his birthday. Hmm. See, they leave all this out when they talk about avoiding Christmas. They, they always, here's the first point they go to. We know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. So I ask them, what day was he born? They never have a clear answer. They always say, well, September or October. Well, so you don't know when Jesus was born either. So I'm going to do it December 25th. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> Why? Because that's what I've always done. I didn't do it. Look, before I was saved, it was Santa Claus and candy and presents. Now it's Christ because I got saved. Amen. Hmm. I spent time with family. We fellowship. We worship the Lord. Huh? We honor him. Amen. We have a good time. Huh? Why? I don't think God's mad about that. We, we, our focus is on Christ. And see, and then it says, and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Now, when, 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 when do we supposed to stop praising God and glorifying Him for all the things we've heard and seen? We're talking about His birth here now. Huh? As it was told unto them. Now, it was told unto us by preachers, told unto us by the Word of God. Uh, told to us by our parents, maybe. Hmm? A soul winner. I'm just telling you. Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we'll hear in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. You can be seated. I know I did half the preaching while you were standing. It was good for you. Hmm? <laughs> Ezra used to preach and everybody stood and stayed pre standing until he was done preaching. I, t I told people, I said, you guys, are, you guys are lazy. I tell you to stand at the, and I'm talking about you guys, but at other churches I preach, I said, you guys are lazy. You get groan and moan because I say stand at the reading of God's word. I said, what if I was like Ezra and I said stand and stay stand until I'm done preaching? You'd, then you'd really groan. Ezra would preach all morning into the evening. And people had to stand the whole time. <laughs> he would stand up on the pulpit and preach. Hmm. And then they started going, oh, preacher, don't do that. Why not? Well, yeah, we lazy Christians. Americans are, are, are pathetic when it comes to being a Christian. They're weak. Amen. Praise the Lord. But so what happens is, what I'm just trying to get across to you here, is that there's a time to celebrate the birth of Christ. I heard you don't celebrate his birth, but the thing is, is you do celebrate his birth. See, whether it's December 25th or you want to pick another day, that's up to you. Do you want to pick another day? I have no problem with it. Huh? But you ought to acknowledge the fact that he was born. I'll tell you why. Because God counts men's lives according to the years they've been living. And he starts at their birth. And he knows when they're born. 
Huh? Think about it. Samuel. Samuel, was mom prayed, Hannah prayed for a son. God, if you just give me a son. And God said, I'll give you a son. So he gave him a son. They, they rejoiced in the fact they had a son. Look, do you hear me? And they had a son. When did they rejoice? They didn't know they were having a son because they didn't have all the, the, the equipment they do today to figure out it was a boy. But when he was born, they said, we got a son and rejoiced. They had Samuel at his birth. <laughs> and then what does Hannah do? I'm going to keep my promise with God. I'm giving him to God. He's God's possession now. At his birth. And she weaned him. And once he was weaned, sent him off to Eli. Sent him to Bible college. <laughs> He's only he a few years old. And Eli took over, training him to be a worker, a servant in the house of the Lord. Huh? But what gets me is they never rejected the fact that he was born. I think of Job's kids, his children in chapter 1. They celebrated their day, the Bible says. Well, in chapter 3, it tells you what that day was. It was their birthday. He had 10 kids. They had 10 birthdays, at least. At the, I mean, at the most, 10 birthdays. Because they could have had twins, you know, then they had one birthday for two. But, but at least, at the most, 10 birthdays. And they'd celebrate it. And he'd pray that they would not curse God in their heart while they were celebrating their birthday. But they never denied them to celebrate it. See? People say, Jehovah's Witnesses say, you don't celebrate your birthday, that's vain. You know what we're getting? We're getting Baptists doing the same thing now. My, my. Independent Baptists. Don't celebrate birthdays, it's a vain thing. That's idol worship. Really? Well, how come God's not against it? He's not against it. He's the one who mentions it. I'll tell you, I'll give you a verse in the Bible. Huh? With John, in John chapter 3. When God talks to Nicodemus... And Nicodemus, he says to Nicodemus, yeah, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. The water is, he mentions, he tells you in the next verse, the, you, must, you must come through the water. The, wa the water is of the flesh. And the Spirit is of the Spirit. Yep. That means you've got to be born physically, and you've got to be born spiritually. Yep. You can't be born spiritually until you're born physically. And he's talking about born. He's not talking about when you're three. When you're 15, when you're 25, when you're 40, when you're 100, he's talking about born. Guess what? We ought to rejoice the fact that we were born. Amen. There's a day we were born so we can receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Amen. But that's what they're taking away from us. Do you understand the devil's trying to filter out all this stuff out of our Christian walk and our Christian life? No, be against this and be against that and don't do this and don't do that. Well, check your Bible out. Hmm? Do you think... <laughs> I think this is why God said to Sarah, why does she laugh? I don't think she, he, she, he, he didn't know. But I can imagine the back of his heart, he said, would be saying, why isn't she rejoicing? She's going to have a child. But she laughs about it. And she didn't tell, he didn't talk to Sarah about it. He talked to Abraham about it. And do you know they didn't say, oh man, we had a boy. That's too bad. We had the, the inheritance of Israel. <laughs> huh? No, you know, and it's, it's, it's a shame. No, I believe they rejoiced. Hmm? God was true. By the way, God told you how old Abraham and Sarah was when Isaac was born. Well, how did you figure that out? You had to go back to their birthday, the day they were born. How did you figure out when Ishmael was born? How old they were? Had to go back to their birthday. See, how many know how old Abraham was? How many know how old Sarah was when Ishmael was born? Abraham was 86. Sarah was 76. Sarah wasn't the mother. Hagar was. But Abraham was the father. How do we know that? Because he tells you how old Ishmael is when Isaac's born. Fourteen years old. Why do you know that? Because he told us when he was born. 
Is this not important to God that the birth of men is important for historical reasons in the scriptures, not in some book somebody else wrote? And of all figures in history, Christ's birth should be the most important Amen. of all births. Amen. Hmm? But people are trying to de diffuse it. They're trying to de uh, uh, demoralize it. They're trying to say it's not important to men. It's important to me that Christ was born. Amen. Then I tell, then I hear people saying, "Well, you're idolizing." Uh, Jesus. Well, great. Praise the Lord. It's better than having a Buddha on the shelf. Yes. Amen. Huh? Burning incense. Yes. Having the little icons from the Roman Catholic Church. Yes. Huh? Having statues in my house of, of fake gods. Yes, that's right. Uh, honor the Lord instead Amen. for his birth. Do you know how, how important that was and, and how Impossible it is for man to do what God did in the manger. And prior to that, when the seed was planted into Mary's womb, impossible for men. And we are going to treat it as if it's not worthy of God's worship. Are we not supposed to rejoice in the Lord always? Are we not supposed to worship Him in all areas? We should worship Him for everything He's done. By the way, Karen was teacher telling me something. She was teaching me something. After the message, she got all on fire about what she learned today when I preached this morning. Amen. She said, Dad, that was a good message. I'll tell you what, I started looking up these things. Oh, and then she started preaching in my office. I asked her, I said, where do I bow and get right with God? I said, I'm under conviction. <laughs> uh, she was teaching me all this stuff. And you know what? She was learning. Look, do I, do I say, quit worshiping God? Quit, on, quit honoring the Lord? Huh? Hey, I don't care if you got something. Don't go around learning the Bible and go further than that. But that's what they're telling us about the birth of Christ. Don't go and honor Him. Don't go and learn the Word of God. Stop it! I'm going to give you a historical reason why. <laughs> that's what they always want to go back to. No, I'm telling you, about 90% of these people will say, historically, historically, well, have you read about the history on this? No, have you read the Bible on this? You are making historical books, you they preeminent, over Christ in His book. Now, I honor the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't honor some historian. He may even be a saved historian. I don't honor Him. I honor the Lord. And if He's right, praise the Lord. But if He's wrong, hey, oh me, I better not listen to what He says. I better go to the Bible and find out what the truth is. But that's not what we're doing. That's not what Christians are doing. We're following hook, line, and sinker for uh, other books. The devil's got another plan. He's already brought, put out over 400 perverted scriptures. They call Bibles. You know what he's doing now? Because we become desensitized to the, the authorized version, he's now replacing it with historical books and men's writings. That are not saying they're Bibles. They're history. This guy studied it. He's a theologian. As my preacher says, theologians go down so deep they come up dry. You might have, their books are so dry you can burn them with burn them with a match. You don't even need kindling. Huh? I like well, I, look, I'm glad my preacher taught me this stuff. Look at it. He said, Don't go around reading all these uh, commentaries. Most of them are wrong. He said, don't hold them up like as if they're the authority over God's word. Man, that's the way it used to be preached. Yep. Just like that. I mean, we're talking 40 years ago. Now you don't hear that anymore. Oh, don't criticize them. Oh, don't say that. You make them feel bad. Well, what kind of Christian are you to treat them like? You're a meanie. <laughs> I'm a meanie. I couldn't believe that when a guy told me that. You're a meanie. Really? So I tell him the truth and I'm a meanie. Huh? I'm going to tell you, there's all kinds of places in the scripture where someone was born and God talks about it. Huh? If you follow your scripture, you follow the word of God, you'll find the birth of many men that God... How about Judah and his twins? Hmm? God talks about their birth. It talks about 
being an illegitimate birth. But nonetheless, God used it. Hmm? We, he, all, all, he talks about every tribe in their birth. Now look at, let me, let me give you something to help you out. Now this may seal the deal for you. But when God birthed, he allowed the birthing of these 12 tribes. He gave them a special name for a purpose. And if you look up every name, you'll find out what the purpose is. And Judah means praise. But God never said, no, we're not going to acknowledge that. Because that's where Jesus Christ is coming out of. Amen. That's the one that's holding the scepter up. And it won't leave his house. Huh? Why? Because Jesus Christ is going to hold that scepter one day. He's going to be king of kings, lord of lords. Hey, he's going to rule over, he's going to rule with an iron fist, so to say. Hey, he's going to be the one that's going to be the ruler over all men. Amen. He's going to be sitting on the throne. And you know what? And it come through Judah, and Judah was born, and we're going to say, praise be God, we'll name him Judah. And Judah means praise. Huh? But why? Why would we want to look at that? See, people will preach on that. People will say, praise God, talking about Judah, his birth, and his name meaning praise. But they won't, don't want to talk about Jesus Christ and his birth. And then they want to go on to the other angle. Here's the other angle they go to. Well, you should treat every day the same like that as you honor the Lord in his birth. Amen, I do. Amen, praise the Lord. But this is a special day that we put aside. One that we esteem higher than all the others because this is where everybody, even family members who don't aren't Christians, will focus on the fact that there's Christ that was born in a manger. And you may get the gospel to him. By the way, I had a sister got saved on Christmas. Amen. You want to know why? Because she had a, a, a sickness, ended up in the hospital, and on Christmas Day, we went over to the hospital Amen. and sang Christmas songs to her and the whole hospital. And nurses came in, and everybody was excited that we came over there, the family, and we sang to her. Amen. Yeah. Huh? And she came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. Oh, but we better not do that. I think Jesus Christ was not happy with that. It was on Christmas. See, that's why these guys, are, they're, they're fake. What do they do on Christmas then? On the day we call Christmas and they don't celebrate it. They do what the Jehovah Witnesses do? Huh? Deader than a doorknob? Happy, not happy at all? Hmm? Nah, it gives me a reason to be rejoice, amen? amen. Huh? By the way, if you see our Christmas tree, I got a Christmas tree. And by the way, they, people will come to you and say, see, in the Old Testament, they went out and cut Christmas trees and brought them in and decorated them. Read that whole passage of Scripture. That is not true. That's a lie. They are talking about bringing those trees in, carving God idols out of them, out of wood. And that's what they did with them those trees. I have never cut a tree down, put it in my house, and then cut it up and made God idols out of it. But they're trying to say that's the same thing. No. You know, I put a tree in there, and then we put crosses on it. Huh? Could put, could put a, a scripture verses on it. I don't put any balls on it. I don't like that. Huh? Well, if you do that, that's your business. But hey, I'm just telling you. That. By the way, I'm not going to preach against it. But I'm going to put little, I'm going to, I would like to put little country ornaments on it. Huh? I got some from way back when my wife and I first got married. We put on there. We got ornaments that we had friends who made for us when we first got married that are on our tree. And, they're, and guess what? They're crosses. They're candy canes <laughs> made out of beads and stuff. You know what? I'm not sitting there going, worshiping this tree, by the way. Or the ornaments that we put on it. Right. It's just fun for the kids. And by the way, I don't get up there and decorate a tree. I just like, go for it, kids. Here you are. I sit there hiding them in the ornaments. <laughs> like this. Huh? Okay, we're putting tinsel on. Here you go. <laughs> I don't get it. I like the kids doing it. It's fun for them. But you're teaching them idol worship. I'm not teaching them idol worship. By the way, I've never seen my kids one time bow down for that tree and start worshiping it or say, oh, mighty tree, thank you for being in our house. <laughs> you, know what they, you know what they do? 
everyone will know why we have that. Because it's the Christmas time that we, we honor the Lord at His birth. Every one of them. By the way, when I first got saved, Lord spoke to my heart. And now, by the way, I didn't first get saved, second get saved, third get saved. I guess when I, when I was an early Christian, a young Christian, I went over to Sears and Robux. And I said, well, I got saved, Christmas is here, and now Christmas is about Jesus and his birth. Guess what? I'm going over and getting a nativity scene from Sears and Robux. So I did. Went over and bought one, brought it home, set it up. And I didn't know you weren't supposed to have the, the wise men in it because they weren't there until two years later. Huh? And, but I set it up, and you know, God never got mad at me. He didn't strike me dead. I, you know what? The Lord still moved. Amen. The Lord still was working in our life. Huh? Hmm. Thinking about that, you know, with the three, the, they called the three wise men. It wasn't three wise men. It was wise men. They don't tell you how many. They think it's three because they're the gifts. Gold, fur, oh, gold, fur, gold, myrrh, and frankincense. No, frankincense. And so, <laughs> gold, myrrh, and frankincense. frankincense. They think there was three wise men. But no one knows because the Bible didn't say three wise men. But they came two years later. What did they come to, come to Christ two years later for? Oh, what day was that? I believe he was two years old. I believe it was on his birthday. <coughs> They're bringing gifts to him on his birthday. But let's not catch ourselves worshiping the Lord on Christmas. Hmm? These guys are nuts. You know what I want to do? I want to pack them up and send them to California because that's where the fruit flakes and nuts are supposed to be. Go to California, preach that stuff to them. Hmm? <laughs> They'll probably agree with you. Well, I'm just telling you, don't let people, don't let people make you feel bad that you honor the Lord at Christmas. See, I, I tell, I tell, you know what I tell them? One of the things I say to them when they, they start trying that on me, I say, you guys make Christians feel bad. You don't bring unity, you bring division. Yep. And you make them feel bad about them honoring the Lord. When the Bible says, if you esteem one day above another, it says, so do it. Huh? If you can do it in, 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 the, in the will of the Lord, if you can do it honoring Him, if you can do it with a, a good conscience, then do it. And if you can't, and you want to have all days the same, then do that. God has no problem with either way. But then these people get on there and they start hammering you and beating you up and telling you Christmas is a pagan holiday and I'm going to give you historical reasons instead of biblical reasons. I had a lady tell me today on our Look Out Mountain Baptist Church site, she said, she said, Christmas is a pagan holiday and if you worship it, you're, not a, you're worshiping pagans. And I said, Really? And so I said, well, give me some biblical backing. And, I got, and what I'm preaching right now is exactly what I put on there. <laughs> I started laying it out to her. And then I, my next post after that, right after that, exactly right after that, I said, when, okay, since you think Christmas is a pagan holiday and we're wrong, when did God say women can teach men? And I put question mark, and then I put anyone in big letters, question mark again. You know what happened? <clears throat> She eliminated that whole post, erased it. Huh? Want to know why? Because she's going around preaching to me about Christmas is a pagan holiday and I shouldn't honor the Lord at that day because it's pagan. But yet she's going against Scripture, which is so clear in the Scripture, where God says that a woman's not to teach a man. Hmm? And, and I said that because I went over and looked at her whole post that she has on there. And I said, this lady doesn't know. And, but she looks like she's trying to be a good Christian. Trying to do what's right. I think that's why she got rid of it. I think she got under conviction. Because hmm? she was hammering the guys on there pretty good. Guys would get up there and, and give her biblical reasons. And she would go, nope, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You're wrong. You know, just doing that kind of stuff. And I'm saying, watch out, ladies. You can go down the wrong pathway. You lose the blessing of God. Yep. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm looking. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you. 
This Saturday, we're honoring the Lord for his birth. Yeah. This Friday, I'm honoring the Lord for his death, burial, and resurrection, his birth, and everything he's done in between, and the things I don't know about, and before he was even come to earth, hey, before the foundations of the world, how about in the creation, we honor him for everything, how about when uh, tribulation comes, the rapture comes, the millennium comes, and after that, how about? The, the, when he does the, the judgment seat of Christ. How about when he does the great white throne judgment? How about when he created uh, men throughout the scriptures? He showed us how he created men and how he used them. Why don't we worship every bit of that? Hey, how about we worship Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy? Amen. Worship the Lord for writing those. Yeah. Using Moses. Hey, Moses, he was a master. He was Master Kevin. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> huh? He makes Kevin look like nothing. <laughs> huh? Moses makes excuses. But God used him. You just, let, just give yourself up to it. Well, worship the Lord for doing what he did in Moses' life. And how about in Noah's life or Abraham's life? Huh? How about in Jacob's life? Changes his name to Israel. He wrestled God and he wouldn't let go. Huh? He said, let go of me, God said. He said, I'm not letting go till you bless me. And God said, I'll bless you, and I'm going to change your name to Israel because you're a princeless God. Hmm? How come we don't worship the Lord for that? I got to ask them from now on. You say we don't worship God in his birth? I said, what else aren't you worshiping about God? The great things he's done throughout the scriptures. If you read the Bible, you'd find a lot to worship him about. This would be a minute thing compared to what they're ex exempting from their worship. Huh? Amen. I'm just telling you. We ought to just thank God. Here, why don't we just thank God that he called us? I, I look at I think upon him many times and I break down crying saying, Lord, why would you call me? Why would you call me? Lord, I was, I was in the drug house. I found my way to the bar more often than not. Huh? I found myself coming home late at night, midnight, one o'clock in the morning because I'm drunk. Hmm? My boss, I tell my kids, I said, my boss said it had a really nice pickup truck, really nice GMC, 4x4, four 4 three quarter ton, back in the 70s. And uh, me and him had just partied all night. And he's the one that died and went to hell because he rejected Christ, pointing his finger in my face. I'll never give my heart to Jesus Christ. And he said, uh, he said I don't want to drive you home. You'll have to stay here. And I said, look, at it, let me take your truck and I'll go home. He goes, okay, I'll let you take my truck under this condition. While we're driving down the highway, you read every sign. I want to make sure you can read them. So I did. And I knew all the signs by heart because I drove that road about 20, 20 times a week. <laughs> so I, I don't know where you're looking over here. Oh, that says exit 23. The sign's over there, Mike. What? Well, yeah, exit 23. <laughs> huh? Well, that says this sign and this sign says that. And I went on to, all the way down the highway. I read every sign. He goes, well, you did that perfect. You must be sober enough to drive. I wasn't. So he gave me his nice truck to drive all the way home, which was at about a half hour away. And so I drove it and almost took out my front porch. I was like one inch away from the front porch. I didn't realize it. I just pulled up in the yard, <laughs> jumped out of the truck and went to bed. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what did I tell you? And so I look at God and say, why would you even choose someone like me? I'm an idiot. I was, I was stupid. Huh? I had no sense. Huh? So when you tell me I can't honor the Lord for his birth, his life, huh? For his death and burial and resurrection and shedding his blood, look at, get out of my face. Huh? He kept me alive when I was doing wrong. He loved me when no one else did. And no one loved me. I'm going to tell you that. Even my family didn't want me to come around. At Christmas time, I'd show up. They didn't want me there. They, sometimes they wouldn't even tell me when they're having a family gathering. 
and hope that I wouldn't show up or find out. Hmm? But I found out. I'd show up. Sometimes I'd just show up and they're having it. I'm going, whoa, what's going on here? I'm going, whoa. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did I get so drunk and I'd be so belligerent? Hmm? Be wicked? And they'd have to say, get out of here. Then when I got saved, the same thing. Yeah. Got saved. Don't tell him what it is. He'll come and preach the gospel to us now. <laughs> one, he gives us drink. And the other one, he gives us the gospel now. You know what? But I'm glad I can give them the gospel. It didn't harm them. Amen. It was bringing life. The other one was bringing death. Right. Huh? So don't tell me I can't worship the Lord on December 25th. Right. Huh? Whether I do it on the 24th, the 25th, the 26th, it doesn't matter. If I do it on January 25th, it doesn't matter. By the way, I'm going to worship him anyway. I've done it all my life as a Christian. 40 years of being a Christian, I've done it. I'm not stopping. And your little words and your little historical lessons aren't going to stop me from it. Gee. So just get over it. Why don't Christians just get along? Don't make that a part of point of division. I'm telling you. Now, if you want, if you're sitting in here right now and you say, I want to not worship on Christmas, I don't believe in it. That's your business. Hey, I'm, I'm fired for you. Amen. Just honor the Lord. <laughs> Worship Him. Huh? You don't have to celebrate Christmas. Don't put a tree up. Don't put lights up. Don't do any of that. Huh? But worship the Lord. Look, at Brother Garrisy don't believe in Christmas. <clears throat> he, doesn't, he doesn't worship Christmas. He doesn't worship Christ at Christmas time. He was taught that way. He was raised that way. And I sat down. We had a talk. You know, we had a good discussion about it. And he, he has the mindset. Hey, if you want to celebrate Christmas. That's your business. I have no problem with that. And I said, yeah, and I don't have a problem if you don't want to celebrate Christmas. That's your business. Huh? And then that's when he said, he stops and he goes, but if you want to give me a Christmas present, I am not turning it down. <laughs> I think he was trying to hint to me. <laughs> hmm? It's not that he doesn't have a standard. This is the way he was brought up and that's how he believes and, you know, and that's why he's always believed. Well, I'm not going to take that away from him. Huh? I'm not going to make him feel bad about it. It's not worth dividing him upon. See? And all this division at Christmas time. Takes a, takes, look, at, the devil wants to steal, steal and kill and destroy something that you have. Your joy. And what a way to do it. Hmm? Amen. When someone, if someone ever comes up to you and says Christmas is a pagan holiday, then you start finding out what else they're doing that is wrong. I wouldn't even go and argue with them on it. I'd just start going, hey, do you believe in this? You believe in that? You worship this? You worship that? Huh? Start finding out. Research, as in ask them questions. They'll stumble. They'll start. Look, if you ask them enough questions, they'll start uh, revealing themselves. Huh? I like what one preacher said. He says, you know, I don't believe in, I don't celebrate Christmas, don't believe in it, but my family has me over at the Christmas time, I go and eat. They, play, they put turkey on my plate, mashed potatoes and cranberries, and they put all kinds of vegetables. And he says, as long as they don't say, here's some food we worship Bell with, <laughs> he says, I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, they've never done that. Here, we got some bell food. You want to eat it? <laughs> he says, I just eat it. He says, I like turkey. I like gravy. I like mashed potatoes. I like cranberries. And then he says this, and it's a free meal. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> huh? You know what he's saying? He's saying, hey, if they want to worship Christ at Christmas, that's their business. He says, I don't do it, but hey, they do it. Fine. And if they invite me over for food, I'm coming. See, I'm going to tell you, you know what's funny about Brother Garrison? I'll tell you this. Brother Garrison sends us a picture of him in a card at Christmas time, but it doesn't say Merry Christmas. That's as close as he gets to worship, wishing you Merry Christmas. But he'll send us a picture of him and his family, a card, and saying, hey, we're thinking about you, they're praying for you, and all this stuff. But it comes at Christmas time. Isn't that funny? So that's because he's not holding it against us for celebrating Christmas, and I'm not holding it against him. That's the way it's supposed to be, Christian. Yes, sir. Amen. But there's people trying to make it too difficult on both sides, whether they're for or against Christmas. See, we have the anti-vaxxers. Now we have the anti-Christianers. Yeah. 
anti-Christmasers, the anti-truthers. And it's all coming out. <laughs> well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We just ask you to help us. Give us wisdom in what we heard. And Lord, it wasn't a big message of convicting the soul or anything that I know of. But Lord, maybe someone did get under conviction. I pray that uh, you help them. But Lord, I just want to worship you. This is the time we look to Christ. We look to the manger. We look to your life. We look to Calvary. And I don't leave Calvary out at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we honor you. Because you're about what it's all you're what it's all about. You are the pinnacle of history. You're the nucleus of history. You're what it's all about. This world and our life. It's all about you. And I don't want to leave any of it out. Lord help us. Lord speak to your heart. Many obviously God's speaking to you. You're praying unto him.